Hello, this is Chad Kelly. Welcome to this video about a cotton gin in Humphreys, Oklahoma. This is an overview right here of the gin yard. Now this is where the modules and trailers and the round bales are first stored when they come in from the field. Right there you can see an overview of the actual gin facility, the building there. Burr pile out in the back corner. Shot this with my Mavic Mini fun little drone. Right here you see a white module truck coming in with some round bales from a field. They're going to get weighed right there on the scale. He'll stop for a brief moment. Then he will go unload them. After they unload them from the trailer or from the truck, they're marked with identifying number. That number is used to track it once it goes through the ginning process so the correct farmer gets credit for the correct amount of cotton. Each of these round bales is approximately 5,000 pounds on average. That truck can carry four at a time, which is about the same size as the standard rectangle, rectangular modules you can see in the background there. Now this is how they get the bales up onto this conveyor belt. They came up with a cool little lift for their trucks to get up so the bells can roll and fall onto the conveyor belt so they can slide forward and get into the machine here that's going to tear the cotton apart. Now this is what cotton looks like at the very beginning. After it comes out of the field you can see there's burrs, sticks, leaves. It's at this point freshly harvested and just pretty well filthy. Once it gets up here, this machine is going to break up that hard packed bale and get it all loosened up so that it can start going through the tubes and go to the next stages of the ginning process. So these are some of the drying tubes that are up above. As cotton comes in from the field, it's usually too wet to gin properly so they've got to run through some tubes with dryers in them using lots and lots of air running through it constantly helps to get the moisture levels down in the cotton so that it can move on to the next stage so you can see right there where all the the burrs and and that thing's just going to town back there tearing it up You can see how slow of a process this is, but it is almost constantly moving. It's just inching itself forward little by little. And this is run. Machines are run 24 hours. Like, unless there's a breakdown, that's what it looks like at the back side after it starts to get busted up. That's the track that is rolling the conveyor. It's like a big conveyor belt. But it's like a chain driven type. So this is the back side of that conveyor system where it's getting busted apart and these are the tubes that the cotton starts moving through and that has hot air blowing through it to help dry it out. And here we're starting to see this is the stick machine and some of the drying you can see the cotton gin stand back there. Now as the cotton moves through this section here it is coming as a more dried cotton. It is still more or less fresh out of the field so it's still full of sticks, burrs, and this machine is separating out the sticks and burrs sending this them off in tube to a big pile outside where they'll be collected and like sold off to feedlots to mix with corn and grain to feed steers, get them fiber. This is the actual gin stand. This is where the seeds are separated from the cotton lint. And this machine, they've got, I believe, four of these gin stands, and they're running the entire time. 
as the cotton comes in from the top, it starts getting separated with these real fine knife-like rollers. And as it's doing that, it is separating the seeds out and they're falling down lower. Now this is just a slow motion capture of what it looks like. Now this you cannot see with the naked eye. Like Everything on here is moving so fast. These seeds are just falling, bouncing everywhere. Took the opportunity here to show you what it looks like in a slowed down view so after it moves through here we go over to what's called the lint cleaners and as they're rolling on these rollers with more fine little prickly knives they are helping to separate all the last of the like leaf fragments that are left on the in the cotton and that's what's going to get it that nice clean snow white look gets it super soft feeling and gets it all uniform so as it goes into the belling press everything's just perfect ready to be turned into an actual product after that. These are the blowers for all of the air that is used in the whole cotton gin. You can see how many they have. And these are running everything. One of these goes down, that's going to stop the whole ginning process until they can get it repaired. These huge tubes are just pushing air to each section of the ginning process that is needing air at that time. Here's another look at some of the fresh lint. Now this is lint that has had the leaves separated out from it. It's getting a nice dry look and it just spins and spins and spins. Had to have a little fun with the Ronin SC gimbal right there. I'm easily entertained so you know had to had to share some of that with you. Now this is the top of the press machine. So that cotton lint now as it has been cycled through each of the stages it goes up here and starts to slide down this big tube and then it collects at the bottom there's a huge press you can see it's that door is controlling how much cotton's going through into the press at a time. So it's just up, down, up, down, letting in small sections of it. I didn't go downstairs, but the press machines are pressing up from below and down from above. And you can see as that door opens, another section rolls in and then it's pressed, the door opens, another section rolls in, presses again, and it's just press, press, press. And as it's pressing it, it gets formed into a bell that is then marketed off and sold to be turned into actual products that you're used to seeing as the finished item. right here is going to be where the bell will pop out and this is another press that is keeping it compressed together this banding machine will actually wrap it front to back and you can kind of see how that cotton just folds over on itself 
So as it's rolling down that big tube into the press, it's like kind of like little sheets that are just folding back and forth over themselves. Now as the tension's released here, um, oops, <laughs> got to get that extra out of there. So sometimes it bulges past the uh, past the walls on the press machine. So that's just he's pulling out any extra to keep it all running smoothly and uniform here. But as that compresses down, it automatically puts tension on that finished bell. And then it is ready to go the final step in the ginning process, which is they're going to pull off a sample. <clears throat> and at the same time, it is going to get bagged and weighed right there. And then it will be marked with a number. And that number is tracked with it from here, where it's bagged, all the way to where it is sold. And then from there on to where it is used in production. So about the time that one bell is getting bagged, the one right behind it is ready to go. Now these are the banding rules. I thought this was really cool how they set this up. So all these bands are set up several feet away. They're stretched overhead and they go into this machine. And that machine is feeding into that bell bander. And then you can see there's not any extra up there at the top, so he didn't have to come over and clean it out any. You can see it's compressing those sheets, getting them super tight. So they don't have to actually cinch down these straps as soon as they release the pressure. Boom. Fully taut and that's going to stay together. Now here it's rolling up. It'll get pushed forward by an arm. And this next section right here is where it is going to yank off a section that will be used to grade the whole bell just off of one little piece of it, then it'll get bagged. That bag will get that tag, and that number is gonna stay with it for the rest of its journey. And it's just amazing to me now how much of this is automated. So they're running this whole gym machine with, you know, maybe a dozen people at most. So that number will identify the farmer who, whose bale of cotton it is. It will be associated with the grade once the grading is done with it. And that will determine the quality and what kind of price a farmer will get for it. Now each of these bales is right at 480 pounds. That's the standard weight. And my dad was telling me at the current price, cotton's going for about 60 cents a pound. So figure about $288 is what a farmer is going to make off of one of those bells right there. Now, the disappointing part is it may cost them average about $150 to make that bell. So my dad said they, they go off more by the uh, acre. So usually about $500 an acre to farm, and this year cotton was producing about two and a half bales per acre. So between all the work going into prepping the land, plowing, getting rows marked off, fertilizers, herbicides, planting the seeds, all the seeds now have to be bought. You can't reuse seeds like you used to because they are all genetically modified and tracked by these seed companies. So right here is what happens when we, they go outside after four bells are put together. They will get loaded onto a semi and they've got this 
whole little process figured out pretty good. So that guy will just stay in that forklift the whole day. And all he's doing is moving and loading bales. By the time he's done with those four, there's going to be another four popping out that door right there, ready for him to go again. So it's pretty interesting what he's doing. He's rolling one down, rolls the second down, stacks, and then he will pull forward here, roll the third one down, so it'll be ready for him. But before he actually grabs that one, he's going to load those two bells that he just picked up. And then he'll swing back. This is the back side. This is how filthy it is. They did just have a small fire the day before. But you can see how much lint, dust. Oh, it is such a nasty, dirty, dirty job to do. And these people have to do it for 10, 12 hour shifts. And they just... You know, they are putting real work in. This is what's called the moat. All of the more junk type of cotton, uh, the, the lint that comes off the seeds, uh, the little bits that are left over as it's running through the old ginning process that's not better quality cotton. It is all collected in this area here. This machine is separating out the seeds. Those are going off to be sold to seed mills. This is a moat bale. So that all gets compressed together and you can see how dirty. This is just like the throughs. But they use this cotton in furniture. They can use it for archery. They'll make targets out of it and it works well. With archery so this is where the seeds used to come out back when a farmer could reuse his seeds he'd get them cleaned and farmed again this is a trailer when you have a little bit left at the end of a field not enough to make a bell put it in a trailer that's a big suction tube that will pull it out of the trailer and start sending it into the gin yard this is where all of those burrs at the beginning of the ginning process those burrs and sticks are separated out they go back here onto a burr pile now this thing is huge they just built this a few years ago but from here like feed lots will get semi truck loads of this stuff they'll use it to feed steers now I'm about five foot ten <laughs> so that's about three stories tall just a huge pile of burrs Now this is what the back of the gin looks like. I can see my house up there in the top left corner. So these are those yellow tarps that are wrapped around the brown bells when they come in from the field. They are compressed together and then they're recycled back and either reused again or they're sold off for other purposes. Now those are heavy. I was trying as hard as I could. I could not kick that. I could not even get it to wiggle. This was a busted bell from the fire that they had. But you can see it had been outside in, in the wind and dust blowing. But you can see how white that is compared to that moat bell, which is the throwaway stuff. Now this, they're probably going to regen these that got left down there. This is a truck full of the moat bells. Those will go be used mostly in furniture stuffing like for your seat cushions and some to archery target makers. So to make one of these bells cost the farmer average about $150 in cost and they make about two hundred eighty eight two hundred ninety dollars and takes them months and months and months and lots of hard work prepping the field fertilizer herbicide planting the seeds more fertilizer watering several times starting July through September 
for end of August. Then they've got to defoliate more chemicals they have to buy. Then harvest either themselves with their own equipment or paying a custom harvester to do it. And then they shred the stalks and start back with step one, prepping the land, plowing it, and getting all ready to go. So, hope you enjoyed this video going behind the scenes of a gin and getting an overview shot of it. Thank you.